Well, I talked about the gorgeous conditions here in Norman, Oklahoma. You could see a few people with sweatshirts on and their arms folded. 59 degrees, supposed to drop into the 40s tonight. Uh, the wind negligible forecast is for clear skies, which is different from what we had uh, the last time we were here against the University of Miami. Coach Francioni on the far sideline as he watched Oklahoma win the toss, and surprisingly, Oklahoma has said they will receive. So Szymanski prepares to kick it off for the Aggies. You see the numbers on Fran. And Bob Stoops on the near sideline. His ball club with an incredible record, only two losses here in the stadium since he has been the head coach. Kick comes down at the goal line, and this is Iglesias. And Iglesias will take it when he breaks out of a tackle and is open on the far sideline and now being stopped at the 27-yard line. And Szymanski, the kicker, is the man who made the tackle. We were taking a look just a moment ago at Coach uh, Francione. Uh, during the offseason, I'm sure that all of you read or heard about a war of words between these two schools. And what happened is uh, Coach Francione made a comment at an all-Aggie gathering down in Houston. And he did not realize, nor did he think, that there was anybody, a reporter particularly, in attendance. Well, uh, it, it turned into a little bit of a war of words, and Jack Aroot will be along after this play, and will explain a little bit more about what happened. Patrick gets the handoff and he'll go for a couple of yards. Let's go down to Jack. Well, Ron, what you're talking about is a reference that Coach Francione made about the problem with Red Bomar last year and regarding, well, I don't know what they're going to do with the season, but I don't also know what they're going to do for employment. I had a chance to talk to Coach Fran just before the start of this game. He's been extremely distraught about the fact that those comments were reported to the Oklahoma Nation and specifically to the players and the Sooners coaches. He said, Jack, that is not my style. It was meant solely as humor and private humor at that. Okay, Jack. Pass complete to the 42. That's Brody Eldridge, the tight end. And now let's take a look at the Oklahoma starting offense presented by Dell. Here's WWE Hall of Fame announcer, Jim Ross. Jim. Rowan, the Sooners are in Survivor Series mode tonight and will be led by redshirt freshman quarterback slinging Sammy Bradford, the Big Easy, who's cooler than the other side of the pillow. Wide receiver Malcolm Kelly has got the biggest and best hands of the receivers and can beat any DB like a government mule. And the big boys up front average 322 pounds of barbecue beef led by the Andre the Giant clone, Big Bill Lodo. All right, JR with the starting lineups for the Oklahoma Sooners being tackled and the pass has gotten away as Red Bryant was all over quarterback Sam Bradford. And now let's take a look at the starting lineup for Texas A&M on defense. Here's linebacker Mark Dodge. Mark. Starting for the record crew defense tonight. Up front, we got the Brutes, Chris Harrington and Red Bryant. Keeping the blockers off the old guys, myself and Mason Toupay. We got the heavy hitter in the backfield, Alton Dixon, and the interception machine, Kay Carpenter. Mr. Dodge, quite an exemplary young man, which we'll talk about more as the game goes on. And that pass thrown for a very, very short gain. Alan Patrick on the receiving end, and that's Michael Bennett, number 11, a junior out of A. Leaf Taylor down in the Houston area with an outstanding defensive play. It's going to be third down. Going back a bit to the war of words that happened, Bob Stoops was very upset when he heard the comments referencing the job situation with Rhett Bomar and J.D. Quinn, but Coach Franchoni did call Bob Stoops and apologize to him personally. They put that aside, and both coaches have said, it's not an issue with us, it's an issue with our fans. We've moved forward from it. Best way to settle it, but also to talk with each other personally. Bradford throws this one away, and he didn't get it back to the line of scrimmage. Now, he may have had a receiver in the vicinity, but a, this time heavy pressure from Chris Harrington. Well, that was Joe John Finley in the vicinity, but I'm with you, Ron. I, I think this may have been grounding. Well, it's one of those yeah. situations where it's close. Joe John was close. He was in the vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Bradford, it, 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 but that's two times yep. that had pressure. pressure on him. And that's the one thing against Colorado which really upset him and got him out of rhythm. And not from blitzes. That was with a four down rush both of those times. So AM getting pressure without ha having to bring their linebackers. Here's Cohen with the kick. This is a good coverage kick. Very high. No fair catch. 
And a tackle immediately at the 17-yard line. That's Roger Holland. Now let's take a look at the Texas A&M starting offense presented by Dell. Here's running back Jaworski Lane. Jaworski. Tonight we're going to start out with Stephen McGee. Stephen McGee is the leader of our offense. He throws the ball to 6'7", 240-pound Martellus Bennett. Look at him. He's, he's a man. Up front, we have Kurt Elder. So far, he's led me with 16 touchdowns. And tonight we look for 17, 18, and 19. Thanks, Jaworski. <laughs> we also look forward to seeing you carrying the football tonight. In fact, he's in the backfield right now. McGee will keep it. And it's going to be stopped after a short game. Now let's take a quick look at the Oklahoma defensive starters. Once again, here is JR. This is about to pick up on the center defense led by Stone Cold Austin English, a former running back turned sack master. The middle linebacker, Curtis Lofton, an honor student, is a cerebral assassin and a true slobber knocker. And cornerback Reggie Smith, he's quicker than a hiccup and can run like a scalded dog and is due to take a punt to the house tonight, Ron. All right, JR, great job. Two setbacks, and this is Smith, youngster who was a sophomore out of Tyler Lee. And we were told that we're going to see a lot more of him this evening. Talk about that lineup that they're in right there. That's what the Sooners are referring to. That is the wishbone, the two setbacks. You there. know, and a lot of teams, when they run that type of read option, a lot of times the quarterback has either been given the, the signal to keep the ball or hand it off. He's not truly reading it. AM does read it. And they give McGee the opportunity to read that backside in. Am I going to keep it or am I going to hand it off? And that's what makes it so difficult because McGee is very good at reading that. You don't see that with a lot of quarterbacks. Well, that sequence is fullback, quarterback, pitch, and that's the responsibility of the defense. This time reverses out on the play action and throws the ball incomplete. That's Pierre Brown that he wanted. Let's take a look at the X Factor, Ed. Well, as Texas A&M throws the ball on that down, we'll talk about the running game because Texas A&M, one of the best in the country, ninth in the NCAA. They have struggled, of course, in their losses, only had 75 yards rushing last week against Kansas. The bad news for them is they're going up against one of the best defenses in the country overall, not just against the run. So we'll mark that tonight and see A&M, especially in that Miami loss on the road, couldn't establish the run at all. Second down and 10. McGee again will keep the football and take it out across the 30 to around the 33. Lewis Baker making the tackle. Now you look at this statistic of the rushing yards in wins versus losses, and you say, well, they, they got behind, and so they had to throw it. And that, that's a little bit true, but if you watch the game last week against Kansas, that game never got out of hand. The biggest uh, lead that Kansas had was only 11 points, so they just haven't been able to do it. And, and you look at the game at Miami, the games that they've lost, they haven't dedicated themselves to the run. They've gotten out of their game plan. They've got to stick to it and keep Javorski Lane, Goodson, and now we see Callender Smith keep pounding those guys. Wants to throw, middle screen, that ball is very high, being tipped around, and it's incomplete. And boy, a dangerous situation on a ball that sometimes is picked off. Give credit to Gerald McCoy, a redshirt freshman out of right here in Oklahoma City, number 93. Well, and, and he gets, it, they did a great job of reading the screen and went up and jumped it for it. And Curtis Lofton was trying to go for the pick, but Demarcus Granger was over there tackling Javorski Lane, and Lofton couldn't get both hands up to catch it. A&M very lucky that Lofton couldn't get through about 600 pounds of humanity to catch that ball. Reggie Smith, the deep man, Justin Brantley prepares to kick it away. Back to the 17-yard line. Really good coverage with the Aggies, and they're going to drop him back inside the 10-yard line. That's 49 yards and a kick and a minus 10 on the return, and it was Mark Dodge on the tackle. Possession each for.